What is happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you look are doing well and welcome to today's video which is another Chelsea news video to give you guys updates on what's happening in West London while everybody endures a rather stale international break. Look man, I do like international football a lot of the time but to be honest, like the rest of you, I'm already missing domestic football a lot. But anyway, there's a few interesting updates and a couple of positives to talk about in this video. So I was going to say let's get into it, but I want to remind you before we do get into it, I do want to request that you do subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell notifications icon because I upload videos every single day on this channel and I want everyone to keep up with the content. So it's important that you guys subscribe and make sure you do hit the bell notification. And if you wanna help out your boy, please do like this video. So in today's video, I'll be talking about three things. I'll be giving you guys a little bit more update on injury news, cause that's important. People wanna know when Chelsea players are returning to the squad and when they're expected to play. So we'll be talking about some of that. Emerson Palmieri is to be offered a new contract extension or an improvement contract at Chelsea Football Club which doesn't really come as a surprise so I'll be making a few comments on that and World Cup winning big Frenchman Olivier Giroud has made some interesting comments about his desire to be first team striker at Chelsea and where he sees his career sort of ending up so we'll end on that I think you know what let's start on Emerson Palmieri because it's a relatively straightforward story He's apparently about to be offered a new contract at Chelsea Football Club and this comes as no surprise. He's been the starting left back for over I suppose half a season now if you count the end of last season. He was signed as I guess primarily as a backup to Marcus Alonso but obviously he's muscled his way to the front of the line. He's been exceptional this season in fact he's the highest rated Chelsea player on who scored I actually did a video on that a few days ago if you haven't seen it I'd urge you to go and check it out and by those same metrics on who scored he's the highest rated defender in the Premier League at the moment. I can't imagine he's on mega wages at the moment but certainly a man of his age and his prime he should be offered a contract extension a brand new shiny contract with on decent money because he's been such an important player for Chelsea under Maurizio Sarri but also under Frank Lampard out of the whole back line really he's the only sort of player in that back four who you say yep no problem there there's problems at centre back there's problems at right back but when it comes to the left back position he's making loads of defensive actions like something like 6.5 tackles and interceptions per game approximately and he's getting forward really really well and offering loads to just generally Chelsea's all round play so he absolutely deserves this new contract he played really well for Italy the other day as well and he's come out and made some comments saying this is probably the form of his life and he's very very happy at Chelsea he sort of explained how he was very happy under Maurizio Sarri but obviously a player wants to be playing and he's playing and I think he likes Frank Lampard so like the rest of the camp at Chelsea everyone seems happy that includes Emerson who's in great form he's playing a lot and I think he's going to sign a new contract extension happy days for the Brazilian Italian next up let's talk about some returning players from injury so Everyone I'm sure knows who's out at the moment. Rudiger, N'Golo Kante, Hudson-Odoi, Loftus-Cheek, Reese james uh, I think I've said N'Golo Kante, Kovacic, a bunch. Now, the positive news is the players returning, the majority of them are sort of fit after the international break. The one player that won't be is Ruben Loftus-Cheek, who had the worst injury out of him and Callum when it comes to the Achilles, uh, ruptured Achilles tendon. He's expected back in the sort of winter time period, maybe in late November to play a game then, or perhaps that's expected when he actually will play a game, but he's not returned to training yet and won't for a little while. The rest of the players are generally fit, but they're just being monitored at Cobham. Probably the two players that you can expect to be immediately reintegrated into the team are the likes of N'Golo Kante and Mateo Kovacic. Maybe closely followed by players like Antonio Rudiger. But when it comes to Callum hudson Adoy and Reese James, not only do they need to be kept up to speed for Frank Lampard's football, they're very young players and I think the medical staff at Chelsea want to be careful with them and they want to protect them. 
Frank Lampard's commented on Callum Hudson-Odoi's fitness. He says, yeah, he is fit, he is training well, but they're being especially careful with monitoring his fitness, especially around his Achilles, because he's worth a lot of money for them. He didn't say that, but you know, he is worth a lot of money to Chelsea. He's an important player, and they want to be incredibly careful before they reintegrate him back into competitive football. So even if he seems willing to go and he's fit, They've got to be extra careful with him. I think it's a sort of similar case of Reese James, although his injury might not have been as bad. But these kind of players, you can probably expect to certainly see be starting in the League Cup game in a few fixtures time. Whether they'll be immediately reintegrated, that's probably unlikely. I can't imagine, personally, you will see these players start against Wolves at Molyneux. And to reiterate, really, the most likely players you would probably see there are maybe N'Golo Kante and Mateo Kovacic. And maybe Antonio Rudiger, because he has been playing competitive, well, he's been playing games for the development squad in a sort of competitive atmosphere, I suppose. He's not just playing with bibs on, basically. He's actually been playing matches. What would be an interesting inclusion is if Rudiger does start, but either himself or Tomori are pushed out to the right back position away against Wolves. Purely to give Aspilicueta a rest because obviously he seems horrendously overcooked and has been underperforming. Another story I did want to add real quickly that I didn't preface at the beginning of the video is how young Kepa Rita Balaga is Spain's number one. Now this was been the case for a little while now. Certainly the Spanish coaches have been commenting on how we want Kepa to be the number one. He won the Europa League just after Chelsea won the Europa League and I think he suits the Spanish national squad's football better. He's more of a technical footballer than David De Gea. I think Kepa's got seven games for Spain, seven wins and De Gea obviously had an awful World Cup with Spain, I think he was statistically the worst goalkeeper in the competition, which is dreadful. So it's looking really, really good for Kepa. Obviously he made that amazing save last time out for Spain where he won his team the points. So although that wasn't one of the main stories in today's video, I just wanted to comment on that because he's been interviewed and asked about it and he sort of came out with the diplomatic, oh, you know, free goalkeepers are training, we're all in contention, uh, there's no animosity and it's all cool. But Kepa is absolutely Spain's number one keeper, which is lovely to see as a Chelsea fan. All right, then let's move on to the final story of today's video, and that's on Olivier Giroud. He's made some recent interesting comments about his position at Chelsea, what he wants to do in his career. He's obviously getting on now, he's 32 years old, but he's still in fine form, still getting selected for France, still scoring goals, still an important figure, and he's in pretty darn good shape still. So Giroud was questioned about his position at Chelsea with Tammy Abraham coming in and doing well and he said some interesting stuff and I will quote it from my phone now. He was asked if he is expected to stay on the sidelines and Giroud said obviously not. I have goals in my head and he scores goals with his head. I'm here to help the new generation but beware. The time for retirement has not come. I'm still hungry and have a lot of ambition. I do not want to be Chelsea's number two striker for sure. Mm. Just because I'm an older brother out here for younger people, it doesn't mean I'm out on the sidelines. Just on that, that's a really positive note because Giroud has accepted the role of, I guess, role model, older brother, which is nice. He wants to help the younger players. There seems to be like a good camaraderie there, which is good. But he goes on to say a couple more things. Giroud went on to talk about the competition. The competition is open and healthy with young Tammy Abraham, which was not the case last year. The boy has taken his chance. He scores and he works well. I will have to try and put pressure on him. There is no reason for me to worry about the rest of the season. He's backing himself. It was actually suggested that Giroud could have gone to America and China before signing the contract extension at Chelsea. Giroud commented, I can go to China and get a big check. But then interestingly he goes on to say, on a more serious note, ending my career in the United States fits me well. For my family, as my children continue to speak English, it would be less exotic and equally rewarding. Language is important. Living in the US is also special. Why not two years from now, take one last challenge, or maybe elsewhere, there may be a great challenge in Europe. So that's pretty interesting, right? I actually think Olivier Giroud would absolutely dominate 
the MLS, kind of like how Zlatan does, not that mobile anymore, big and strong, scores headers, scores goals with both feet. I can see Giroud just doing the similar thing in MLS, and a lot of teams would be very lucky to have Olivier Giroud at, say, the age of 33. He would have a lovely time out there. But it's interesting, he seems to think he could absolutely fight Tammy Abraham for the first team spot. I'm not so sure, I think Giroud is a really, really valuable player to Chelsea at the moment, and indeed Frank Lampard, but in terms of Frank Lampard's football and his vision, Tammy Abraham does suit that a lot better but I've said in previous videos and I'll say it again I think Olivier Giroud could be the first choice in Champions League games um, and I think he'd be very good in that European platform and he'd still get minutes in the Premier League regardless but you can understand a World Cup winner scoring goals for France still the world champions and generally being at the end of his prime but still being good he'll he's desperate to play so I guess it's kind of perfect really think about it he happy to be the role model to Tammy Abraham and help him and applaud him on the sidelines when he does good things, which he does, but also he's like, no mate, I'm not chilling, I'm not just sitting here and retiring on the bench, you like mess up once, I'm taking your spot, which really is perfect, it's healthy competition and it's just the right sort of balance of support yet pressure, so I think it's the perfect thing to hear from your second striker. <laughs> he won't want to hear that, but second striker. Anyway, that's it for the Chelsea news video today. What do you guys think? Get down in the comments below. I'm intrigued and interested to get your guys' thoughts as always. If you want to help me out, please do like the video. If you want to support the channel, you can also become a patron. Well, I've also got a Streamlabs link in the description below now if you want to throw me a dollar or whatever you guys fancy anyway follow me on social media as well at football yannick that is at football yannick on instagram and twitter but i'm done guys enjoy the football and i will see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck i'ma get it how i'm living i'ma walk the walk outline my lines i rap through thought body bag the verse outline the chuck in my life seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle, yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble, I only love this paper, sorry I don't I laugh me baby